Sally YouTube! I've got my friend Dominique back with me again. Back again. <laughs> if you guys haven't seen our video already on the expat perspective on the Parisian beauty codes, you can go and check it out up here. But today we're going to be doing something quite different. On a Close to our hearts. Close to our hearts, literally. <laughs> Which is surviving, well that's not a very nice word, but thriving, 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 <laughs> thriving in bicultural relationships. So what we've learned so far about what works when you have a bicultural relationship and some kind of tips and tricks. Mm -hmm. Because it's a very specific situation. You come from completely different backgrounds maybe. And, and then you throw into all that the yeah. language aspect as well. It's such a particular relationship. Yeah. We're going to get straight into it with a few things that we've learned about being in these very special relationships of ours. Yeah, I think, I mean, when you're in a bicultural relationship, you have two people who come from very different backgrounds. They probably lived in two entirely different countries and then throw on top of that the... Um, you've grown up speaking two totally separate languages. Mm. I think it's natural that you're both going to be approaching this common project, which is the relationship, <laughs> from very different starting points. Mm. And I think the foundation of a bicultural relationship is this will always be um, a source of the best things in your relationship and also a source of your biggest challenges. In order to make the most and really thrive in your relationship, both parties have to meet in the middle. So that means to say they need to stay curious as to the other person, regardless of who is the, who is the party who's living um, in the country of the of the partner. Mm. I think both of them need to both the host and the the alien <laughs> need to make an effort to stay curious, be interested, ask questions um, about the upbringing, uh, the cultural reference points of the other party. Yeah, you know, to use an example, um, British uh, British culture obviously has a very strong, very particular sense of humour. Concept of banter is something that doesn't really exist in France mm. and in order for my boyfriend to uh, come to the UK, meet my friends, um, get along with my family, just even understand something as simple as reading a magazine, watching a TV show, there's certain cultural currencies that need to be understood before mm. that. So I think it's important that although I'm the party who's living in Paris and you know we speak French here and we socialise with all of his French friends, um, I really appreciate it when he wants to uh, you know, sit down with me when I'm watching something silly, I don't know, The Inbetweeners, for example, a comedy programme which has made a big cultural footprint on the UK. And that's mm. something that next time when it crops up uh, in the UK or in a different programme or a different, um, you know, an article. Yeah, he gets it. He gets it. Even just asking your, your partner about what were their critical life events growing up when their childhood, what were their favourite movies, what impacted yeah. them growing up and maybe like reading that book, watching that movie. What my boyfriend does, which I really appreciate, is he listens to our national news radio every single day on his way to work as a little podcast. Podcast. For me, that's such a nice sign that mm. he's invested. But stay curious about your partner's culture, both of you, and learn about the cultural references and mm. the pop culture that that make a culture a culture. Yeah, the next is. point is something that's quite close to my heart because I'm going to be completely honest, this was a really big source of tension for our bicultural relationship, which is it's really important in a bicultural relationship not to think that your life pattern, the typical life pattern for mm. your culture and big life milestones and when they happen are going to happen at exactly the same time. And to get a little bit more concrete about this is that, um, you know, for us in New Zealand, we married a lot of them, like 28, 29, then you start usually having kids early 30s, like obviously it depends, but this is the general rule. And in France, that happens a lot later. Yeah. It would definitely be worth investing some time into understanding what's the cultural norms in terms of life milestones. Mm -hmm. Because more and more French people um, aren't getting married, they have or they have kids first and get married mm -hmm. afterwards. That's so classic in France, mm -hmm. isn't it? That's fine, like, but I just wish I had known that so that it didn't upset me when you I think was you're an anomaly, yeah, and yeah. this is totally not normal. I, I, I think that goes um that spills out into all areas of your life as well. I think in the UK the cultural norm is to uh, when you finish your high school studies, eighteen, you would then go to university. The likelihood is you would choose university as far away from your parents as possible. <laughs> yes. Probably would never go back. Mm. You'd finish your degree, get a job somewhere and off you go. Go live in your flat share with your friends and meet someone and that's that. Yeah. In France that's quite different, that's not usually the case. Um, it results uh, in 
people staying at home living with their parents and brothers and sisters much later mm. in a way that from an anglophone perspective and i see it with my english eyes i think that's weird the way it works is a different timeline things are a bit slower yeah due to various factors you know in, in france i feel people study a lot later they st they start to do their masters or even multiple masters yeah. into 26, 27, 28. It's definitely learning about these kinds of things and mm. genuinely, you know, what you can expect in terms of a life rhythm will be a really big help. Mm -hmm. um, so I think another big point kind of goes without saying, but it's important to mention as well is um, in a bicultural relationship, communication is key. Regardless of your individual setup, whether you're speaking your mother tongue, their mother tongue, or mix half and half. Mm. And I think you need to emphasize a level of transparency that perhaps you wouldn't go to such pains to emphasize in, in, in if you were with uh, a guy and girl from your who speaks your mother tongue. Yeah. yeah, you never assume that it's obvious. Yeah, never assume it's obvious and, you know, <laughs> It's perhaps not as like sexy and romantic and, and mysterious as you mm. imagine, but I think it's important to uh, understand the boundaries and define a relationship. Something as simple as like uh, when you meet someone you know, or moving forward with them, with my UK mind, you would not mention, especially not early on, oh, so what is this? You know, are you my boyfriend or are you serious about me? Yeah. Just be like, play it cool, keep going on dates. If my friends privately said, so what's going on with so and so? You'd be like, Oh, you know, we're seeing each other, it's casual, we'll yeah. see. It's important to understand where you are um, a little earlier and to probably make it clear, just come out with it, mm. ask them, um, and at least you know where you stand. Yeah, and it doesn't necessarily get easier with time. So of mm. course, like, explicit communication is important up front, but even long term, like, my boyfriend and I, we're basically trying to define what would make us happy in life. And we actually got to the point where, because it wasn't working with the language, we like drew it out. We're like, okay, this is what really? I this is what I imagine an ideal life to look at. There's this element. There's this element. Finally, it clicked. We're like, oh, okay. We're mm. on, actually we're on exactly the same page. You weren't choosing like what I thought were the right words to say it, mm -hmm. and I wasn't choosing the right words. But we yeah. want the same thing. It's what you perhaps would take as surefire indicators if you were someone who was coming from your own background and your own mother tongue. Yeah, might mean entirely different things or might not mean any mean anything at all yeah, yeah. i think i'm um, the big thing uh, my big takeaway from bicultural relationship is if you're expecting it to be the same um as relationships you had before when it was with people from your speaking your mother tongue from your you know native background it won't be you need <laughs> yeah. to just accept that it won't be and if you expect it will be and you try to turn it into that yeah you will only be disappointed the things that you engaged with perhaps and you uh, were most important to you with former boyfriends or girlfriends uh, that is likely not to be the case mm. you know what you really connect on and what you love about them and what um makes generates the fun and the interest in a relationship is likely to be totally different yeah that's um, true it's so, unlikely to resemble anything you've had before and that's you know that, that's so true sort of challenge and yeah fun. and we we're saying like that goes both ways so um hmm. they they may not live up to the idea you used to have of a boyfriend they'll be very different on girlfriend yeah. they'll be very different and that's fine that's cool but likewise you shouldn't try and mold yourself to what you think they're expecting i've asked this question to my boyfriend like why do you make your life so hard like why are you dating a new zealander from the other side of the world think about it guys like where are we gonna live mm. if we have kids where is it gonna be like these Switching are time yeah, yeah. Th these are huge questions and i'm like oh wouldn't it just be so much easier for you to date a French girl yeah, when meeting their parents and, and meeting their family and stuff you're like maybe I should be that perfect French girl kind of approach to a girlfriend make an effort to be as French as possible yeah be as French as possible and actually like the reason they chose you is because you're is, you're, is because you're different it's because yeah. yeah you bring excitement adventure you're something different you you constantly learning from each other so like mm. own it yeah you will always be something different you can you can I'm convinced that you can spend as many years as you like in a country be it five be it 25 you will never wake up one day and be a French girl no for various reasons even if you master the language you can never make up for a childhood and yeah, uh, formative years formative years yeah. that you had elsewhere so sure it's great and you will um, assimilate and adapt to where you're living and the language you're speaking and your work situations all kinds of other influences but yeah i think it's important to uh, own who you are and who you were when they met you yeah definitely you know, and at the beginning when they met you you didn't somehow hoodwink them into thinking you were french no, and then they exactly. realized like, oh no she's actually foreign like oh do i really want to be doing this 
you know, they, they, they made that decision with their eyes open and they jumped into it. So exactly. Amazing. We could keep talking about bicultural relationships for hours. <laughs> we wish you had had you guys here to have like a coffee and just like get it over round the table. Yeah, basically. Exactly. Yeah. We've got a lot more that we could say, but I hope this is an interesting indication of you know what works well in bicultural relationships and some of the key principles that allow them to thrive. And obviously we've focused here I think on like navigating the tougher aspects of bicultural relationships. There are so many benefits to bicultural relationships. Yeah, That's a whole nother video. But let us know what have you what have your experiences been with bicultural relationships? It is a tricky one, but it is worth it in the end, I think, if you've put all that time and, and energy into it. We'll let you know in 10 years. Well, yeah, like <laughs> we'll do an update video. <laughs> Thanks for sticking around till the end if you're still here. And if you have any other video ideas for us to cover on this particular topic, just let us yeah. know. Otherwise, see you guys in the next video. A bientôt. Bye. Bye.